I'm liking the hat there today, Jason. That's oh, yeah. Right. I jumped in. Welcome to episode 241 of Soccer Cards United, the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. I am Enzo. That is Jason. And today he's supporting a different a different team again. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens. There you go. Yes. Go Habs. <laughs> um, I'm all thrown off. Whoa, I wasn't expecting yeah, sorry. this. Sorry, no, I wasn't. To be honest, I'm asking I've seen... how I am. I usually ask you how you are. <sighs> it might be a bit different to you. No, no, no. How are you getting on? How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, I tell you what, it's a slow old news week in the hobby. Yeah, it's not been blockbuster. It hasn't been. Blo- Which, to be honest, I was saying this to someone, Jason. I was saying, uh, I'm about to do a podcast, but like, there's not really. It was a bit of a slow week. There's not a lot to talk about. And the person I was talking to, who I won't disclose, the person I was talking to was like, "Is it normally not slow?" And I was like, to be honest, yeah, yeah, there's normally not, loads happening. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's kind of fascinating that, like, if this was a fishing hobby, I don't think we'd be uh, every yeah. week. Oh, you want to see what happened now? The trawlers yeah. and you know what's going on here. Yeah, the trawlers. It's kind of mad that like we. It's rare that a week like this comes across, and we do it twice a week. So it's rare that like a three or four day period comes across where it is not. Or, you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah, it's it's been a whole week. I think without a release. Yeah, kind of. So, um, and usually, like, I have a feeling that there was a time, uh, now this could just be like kind of like rose tinted glasses or whatever, but I have a feeling that there was a time in the podcast's history when, regardless of whether or not there were releases, where we didn't really talk about releases as much as we talk about them now. Probably yeah. there weren't as many releases at a certain Definitely. point. Definitely. I mean, from 2019, 2020, there wasn't. Like, even 2020 felt like they cranked it up, but it's still no, it's totally different. Yeah, there was no, 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 we don't match for what comes and, out at the moment. You know, there was Steve Aoki Chrome, like there was some mad stuff going on in 2020, yeah. but it still feels like now it's, especially with all, all the new licenses the tops have and Panini have started to really focus on soccer in a serious way. Like we used to have a period mm. where there was no selects and now we're getting what, four selects a year, you know. It's, That's right. Yeah. It's different. Um, so now there's like, so now it's mostly just kind of, we're looking at either forward or backward all the time to look at uh, different releases so when there's no releases uh in a week and there's no releases to look to like there's no apparently as far as i know there's nothing coming out like um, no big huge releases coming out tomorrow or monday the next or whatever big one that we know of, i think is the 20th which is merlin chrome yeah and we've already previewed that on the show yeah because people yeah there's a very weird rollout of that where like there's a lot of people that have that a pre-order and they have images of the box and stuff and there's a lot of people that are in the dark with no information it's people always ask me they're like enzo uh, are you gonna have merlin chrome do you have all this information do you have everything and i'm like i don't know any i know it's coming and i know i should get some but i have no information i know other people have sales sheets and they have their pre-orders up and they know what price is going to be mm-hmm. i'm in the dark i don't know i'm excited right. for it but i have no idea you, you're sending them a link to the podcast uh, this this segment on merlin chrome is the extent of I'm my knowledge of the a link to like questionable french websites to have more information than me that's what i do okay well um, there is one, uh, well, there's a, actually, there's a few a few stories to talk about. Um, I just want to start off um, talking about a story uh, which was a kind of a, collab- a sort of a citizen journalist collaboration between uh, the likes of uh, Soccer Cards HQ, Breaking the Law, various other people, uh, uh, proper proper Soccer Card community members. Um, and it's about Dynasty. Now, you remember, remember on the Tuesday show, we were talking about Dynasty uh, holding strong as a, uh, as a sealed uh, product. Um, yeah. And we have another, another twist in the Dynasty tale, uh, which is that there appears to be training shirts included as part of uh, quote-unquote match-worn Dynasty patches. Yeah, super disappointing uh, to see. And it seems to be within... It's not It's not every player. In fact, I've only seen, I think, two or three um, yeah. as, at the moment. But uh, pretty pretty shitty. Now, I remember when Dynasty came out, we were looking at the checklist... The one that jumped out at us was Jose Mourinho, and we initially were like, "Well, what's he's not wearing a shirt during the match? So, is it a training shirt? Is it a kind of a touchline tracksuit, tracksuit, or or coat or something?" Um, so that was kind of a first, maybe, you know, uh, indication, or that was like a first kind of a sort of a clue, maybe I don't know. And um, but now there's kind of a whole series of investigations going on over Tucker Cards HQ, it appears. Um, so. Uh, this is Wayne Rooney. For anyone listening, this is Wayne Rooney, one on one, a Manchester United uh, patch auto. And uh, in this uh, post here, soccer says you So the marketing the tops use said all relics are 100% match worn, and the card says match worn memorabilia. I guess legally that's their out as a training shirt could be considered a relic or memorabilia since those are very broad terms. So UK soccer cards, again, I tell you, this is like a big collaboration, uh, did some digging and found, uh, likely found the exact training shirt they bought to use. 
Uh, of course, they could have just bought the actual jersey, but why spend an extra seven thousand uh, pounds? So this is like a Man United uh, 2014 Champions League training top for four hundred ninety-five pounds sterling, uh, and then next to it on I guess this website uh, is a seven and a half thousand pounds sterling uh, match worn shirt from 2011 2012 now i pointed out on that one so this is what i seen on the i pointed out on that one that that was a premier league shirt that one the other one was from a champions league this is premier league and i said maybe they just uh-huh. are not able to use premier league worn stuff on a champions league product but then other people were kind of pointing out that i think that kevin de bruyne might be a premier league shirt according to people whoa so there's a bit of a there's a lot going on it's an but, awful um, lot going on here yeah, yeah i mean look yeah. wayne rooney wore it Potentially wore it maybe in the warm up pre game. Is that the kind of idea of that? Like as opposed to just in training? Hmm. Because you know when they when they run out at the a start. Pre game. Yeah, sure. There's you, you can go onto onto I'm sure you can go to Man- Manchester United.com and buy a pre game warm up shirt. Yeah, so is it that? But either way, yeah. it takes a bit of the shine off off the honestly, especially because like you'd have to imagine the Wayne Rooney cards now will be worth less than they would be otherwise for the high end collectors. Because ultimately when you're at that high end and you're spending the kind of crazy money that some people would spend on a dynasty card, one of the things you're saying is the patch is a match worn patch from a jersey. It is on card auto. This is class. Obviously, on the flip side of it, you yeah. just want to see a beautiful patch and you, you know, a beautiful. Like if you're collecting the card, you know what I mean? If you're mm. saying this is a one of one dynasty, that's all I really care about. It's on card auto. There's a patch there. The player wore the patch, so I don't really care. But for me, like you see the United Crest uh, and it's like in black on. I need to look at it again, but it's not like the the standard kind of yellow red crest. Right, yeah. That takes the shine off. Like that's not the act. That's not the proper. I know some jerseys the crest is a different color or whatever, different yeah, colorways. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like that's not what you're kind of expecting to see. You're wanting to see like the Real Madrid patches, like the proper. Yeah, the full kind of full color traditional color patch. I suppose like well, in terms of prices prices coming down or you know people not being willing to pay as much for these things, I don't know if if you could reasonably. I don't know if it will affect the price that much because what what did Tops provide you with prior to this to make you but you know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of like I could understand if if Tops said this is a match worn shirt from this game this particular game that Wayne Rooney wore for the 75 minutes he played before he was sub blah, 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 right. I understand that if there's some sort of certificate or some sort of actual kind of uh, traceable provenance attached to the card. Yeah. But if Tops said it's a match worn shirt and then you you sp- you're you're willing to spend, I don't know, twenty grand on the card. Then it turns out it's a training worn shirt. I don't know how much you drop because tops weren't really guaranteeing you anything in particular in the first place. You know what I mean? And we've seen, yeah. Like, I still I mean, think I don't, it, I don't really want to talk about messy autographs, but like we've we've seen loads of examples of this has been officially authenticated, and then it's like, well, it's clearly not this autograph. <laughs> no, I know. For me, like the, I like that where people are able to hunt down the kits that were bought because it does show that there was a lot of due diligence in the process of putting the set together. Do you know what I mean like? what other set can you say this is the kit here i found it here you know what I mean? so it's like they did actually spend the time procuring these kind of relics so they, they took as much care as they could obviously they didn't share the information yeah they didn't share where they got it from so it was that sneaky almost maybe but yeah. it's kind of like i don't know you've done so much you've done, like you've kind of sit down and said we have to do it like this 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 but then whether it was a budget thing or whatever or maybe it was difficulty in finding a thing i don't know at some point, corners were kind of caught where you're like, ah, the training kit's grand. Like, chill. yeah, I suppose like it's it's you, you've done all the hard work and you've decided, okay, if we want to put a Wayne Rooney, let's or let's look at this example. Just can I say it would have made more sense to do all of this for a set that wasn't called Dynasty because I feel like Dynasty, as much as it is one of Tops' most premium sets, isn't really revered in that way. Mm, I know what you mean. Um, this is a uh, Hoytel here uh, on Twitter found this uh, marathon bet training top that seems to be from Manchester City's training ground. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is wearing it there in a photograph, and uh, looks like there's two patches from this in two different cards. And we found the listing here on I say we all these people it wasn't me on Golden Soccer Signings UK, and it appears to be the very same training top uh, again for seven hundred and fifty pounds. Um, that was out of stock. So that looks like the one that, that Tomps may have acquired or may not have acquired. We don't know. These are all kind of just theories. And then if you look at the UCL match-worn shirt, two and a half thousand pounds. So like, look, it's not unlikely that they said, okay, we could do this and each card will cost us an average of X or we could get all match-worn Champions League shirts and it'll be cost us Y, which is like four times or five times X. That's right. So at that point then, I understand. You have to make a decision. Are we doing all match-worn? Or are we not doing all match worn? But you can't not do all match worn and then say you're doing all match worn. 
Yeah. And call it, you know, the greatest soccer set of all time, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So you can't do that and cut corners here. Yeah. Um, so interesting to to see that. Um, you know, I mean, we saw like recently with the uh, the Alexia Putellas um, yes. and all that and match worn. It's like, well, she didn't play any matches in that jersey. So how does that, how does that work? Um, yeah. It, for me, it comes down to uh, communication and an unwillingness to compromise on anything other than, uh, you know, or comp- like to kind of take take a take a hit in the face or take a take a punch on it. Not great. Because um, in theory, you could have had the box even more expensive. Like here's a here's an idea. You could have had the box even more expensive, but included specifically what shirt each shirt or what shirt each patch was from. Definitely. And people are like, why is the box five grand? It's because this is how much the jersey costs. This, here's all the, the due diligence that went into it. Here's yes. all, you know, look at all of this. We've never seen this before. Look at all of the You've kind never of seen anything paperwork. this traceable. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Because you have to do that work anyway, as you as you pointed out. That work was all done. They've they've hunted. You have to hunt down the, the stuff. So show us. Yeah, not great. Whether or not it'll impact the price, because ultimately, like, regardless of if they were match-worn, training gear, whatever, the price of boxes versus the price of singles in any set that we have never really matches up, these are still being ripped at an alarming pace, I would say. It's yeah. definitely slowed down a little bit recently, but it's like, has it slowed down because the appetite is gone? Has it slowed down because you can't really get it anymore? So it's like... Yeah. I mean, look, we on? talked about the, the price and the price and dynamics of, of Dynasty going forward on, on Tuesday's show. And personally, I don't think this is going to hurt the price of the boxes that much, the price of the cases that much, or the price of the singles that people want that much anyway. But I, I just don't think it's a great look to kind of, you know, I feel like we've almost walked in on, on something here. Yeah, because the thing is, like, a set like this, people were always going to try and figure out where the patches came from. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it just kind of feels like you've been you've been kind of caught looking in somebody else's exam paper or something like that, you know? Yeah, it, it feels like a uh, golden soccer duck out UK, whatever that was called. Um, yeah, have made out very well on this. Yes, yes, indeed. Dynasty was being made, and they they got to shift a few things. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so allegedly, can, by the way, alleged, who like we literally we don't know, don't know. But again, we're, for we're me, just, it's like the fact that you can trace this down is like still a step up from everything else that we've seen to date, which is I've never seen where any of the patches and any of the sets that have come out have come from ever. So yeah, in that regard, I do like I do like. Well, yeah, but I'll just re-emphasize that they didn't want anyone to track this down. Fair, because you're saying that if they did, they would have just put behind that this kit is from this yeah. exact. So you yeah. can't have credit for being traceable if you're not sharing the traceability. True, so but I still like against like, Top's will. I don't know, but like, imagine what, what do you think we would find if we hunted down, you know, a Panini Select patch. I mean, you'd never find anything because it was probably straight from a club store. Yeah, up and yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. It, it's 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 not a great look it's for what good, has been no. a very, you know, otherwise successful release on that. I product. thought so, yeah. yeah. I just kind of was like, I saw it, I was like, oh, oh yeah, no. Yeah, like now Dynasty will always have an asterisk beside it. I suppose that's the thing. The one thing you try to avoid in soccer cards and cards, period, is asterisks. You don't want to say yeah, yeah, everything... Yeah. The reason Dynasty Soccer is a big deal and the cards out of this are a big deal is they're all on card and they're all match worn. Although a few players, they're not really, you know, maybe you know, maybe none of them are. We don't, you know, match worn. Some of them are training gear. It's like that asterisk is no, stop that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need no more asterisks. As, astr- asterisks. That's right. It, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, oh, wow. What's happening? Are you going to break news on the podcast? I just gotten a text. It's um. Oh my god! What is it? I'm on no, no, it, here, people. This is for the Toronto people. Sorry, it's not something I should have opened, but it's uh, our friends at Airlingos. Yeah, are doing 420 Canadian dollars return, um, to go to the the Dublin Guard Show and back, Jason. And that's okay, like I should just tell people this is not a kind of a planned sponsorship segment with Airlingos. No, this is a photo that I got from a good friend Brad who is making that trip. So right. I wish Airlingus would sponsor us, but no, that's pretty nice. That's a good price. Like, but that's annoying. Anytime we look for price, if we're going to the national, it's never four hundred Canadian dollar. And I know Certainly. it's not Canada, the United States, yeah. but I don't, I don't appreciate that. So that was a that was a live uh, live breaking news of a, a price alert. 
Can I say, he said what a prize I opened. I didn't know what the photo was going to be. I thought there was going to be some card or some box or, you know, whatever. Mm. So I thought it was going to be podcast relevant. You thought it was going to be a Kevin De Bruyne training top patch that had gone for crazy money. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, um, uh, speaking of us traveling, we went to Fanatics Fest in NYC uh, a little while ago. And everyone was talking about future Fanatics Fest events um, in places like uh, Florida and Pittsburgh and LA. California. Um, and this Pittsburgh, apparently, that was a show that was going on uh, has been cancelled. Um, okay. For more on this story, let's go to Sports was Collectors Dailies. Was, was that potentially the second one lined up? Like, was that supposed to be the second? I know it yes, was. it was supposed to be, be later on in September, yeah. Right. So, um... This is from Rich Mueller on sportscollectorsdaily.com. I highly recommend you check out that publication. Fanatics has cancelled plans for its show at Pittsburgh's PNC Park that had been scheduled to take place later this month. The two-day weekend gathering at the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates was the second of three that were announced last company last spring by the company's new Fanatics Events division. That uh, for, uh, The first, a fan-slash-collector Comic-Con-style show called Fanatics Fest took place in New York. We know that. We were there. The show had been scheduled in Pittsburgh for 28, 29 September where, when the Pirates were wrapping up their season in New York. And here we go. CEO of Fanatics Events, Lance Festerman, is going to tell us this. After the success of Fanatics Fest NYC and in conversation with the Pittsburgh Pirates, we simply didn't feel we had enough time to build the event the fans deserve, and there is no rush. We are excited to build an venue base, build on venue-based collector events at iconic ballparks like PNC and others, and will, when the time is right for our events business, our team partners, and our fans. The third and final event announced earlier this year, collectibles-oriented show in Orlando, Florida, uh, in November, is still on, according to a company spokesman, although no specific details have been released as of yet. Fanatics indicated earlier this year that it has plans to hold four types of events, larger flagship gatherings like Fanatics Fest, regional shows, uh, venue specific locations where local athletes would sign autographs and partner events in which the company will quote develop experiences with its sports partners that take place in conjunction with league drafts or other gatherings where fans take part basically the pittsburgh show uh, from fanatics events is off right makes sense that, that seems like a very short timeline from fanatics fest nyc yeah but it is a it, it is an interesting um in the kind of growth uh the growth mindset um the, the grind set of uh of fanatics it's interesting to see them refusing to do something or to or canceling a plan they rarely do that yeah it, to be honest that that just that was the first time i seen that there uh, obviously previous to this i haven't seen any promotion of the, like the, all of the future fanatics fest events seem to be just whispers going around i didn't see yes. could i buy tickets for that pittsburgh event like i don't know if that ever happened um but it was kind of interesting to see them kind of just go ah we're, there's no rush we're not doing it yeah we're gonna do it right or we're not doing it. It's almost like it was very confident cancellation of the event. If that makes well, sense. I, I like that. I, it's funny you picked up on the no rush thing because I like that. That's um, that was a it was a very confident kind of thing. Um, it was like and and you know there's no rush for us. You know, it's yeah, like, we have these licenses for the next fifty five years. Like to be honest, yeah, we'll do it when we when we see fit. We want to make it good because in fairness, New York they might have seen New York and went that was brilliant. Like that people loved it. Mm. Like, that, we can't really could pittsburgh be a step down if we don't do it right you know or could it could it have been the opposite of like how do we will people even want to come if it's not like what do we i don't know they were just kind of like do you know what we'll do we'll just wait we'll just wait yeah. and the same thing with the november one i don't see tickets for that i don't know i haven't really looked but i haven't seen it to be available no, i think they so said like, there's no there's no details announced for it at all yeah but it's like november is uh, obviously okay i'm thinking of it from a transatlantic point of view it's like i don't have to fly to this but it's still November, is still tight, regardless. You know, you have Christmas mm. on the way. It's September now. It's two months away. Your tickets aren't for sale. But that's also a lot of confidence, yes. I suppose. But they're saying the sports fans are already in Orlando. Like, we don't need, like, the locals will come. I don't know if that's what they're saying. I've been to Orlando. I don't know if there's that many locals. Really? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you go to downtown Orlando on a Saturday, there's not a lot of people there. Right. Disneyland takes the lot. They're all in Disneyland, yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, it's just, just interesting. Just like, I, I was like... Fanatics cancel something? What? They were just like, do you know what? Nah, nah, nah. We're not going to do it now. No, 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 no. We're not going to do it. We'll, we'll wait. We're no, but I just, I love the, I love the, uh, the conversation that must have gone on about how do we cancel this without looking like we're taking a step back or we're taking a step down. Just say there's no room. Because you have to look like it's your decision. You know, it's not like, it's nothing to do with the fact that we couldn't get whoever, couldn't get this, couldn't get that. It's actually our decision. We never actually, <laughs> I didn't even want to do it. Yeah, do you know what? I know we said we no. might, but nah. Yeah, no. But like, when did they say they would? That's the thing that confuses me. It's like, they were all whispers. Do you know what I mean? It was almost like, mm. it's almost like they had to cancel an event they never officially announced was happening. That's what it kind of feels like as well. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Fascinating. 
fascinating. Um, now to a uh, to another uh, collectibles uh, publication that's collect uh, about a, for a story about Harry Kane's boots. Mm. Do you remember as we were in uh, New York recently and we were walking down? There was a big billboard of Harry Kane uh, advertising Skechers. He has a Skechers boots deal. No, I didn't. I don't remember that. But I remember right. being in New York City. It was one of the greatest cities on earth, and the bagels were great. And I'm still waiting on my bagel video from you, Jason. Actually, just remembered it there. What are you waiting on it? Uh, you what recorded it. You? you never sent it to me. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. I thought it was for my personal collection. No, I need that. That was actually for our social media and for my personal collection. So. Oh, okay. Well, I we have did a whole thing. The people on the streets of New York staring at me. I was looking like a fool near Times Square. I want that. Fo- I want that video. Sorry. Okay. Fine. Harry Kane billboard. Harry Kane billboard because Harry Kane in the states is quite a visible advertising figure for Skechers. Um, right. Even though uh, over this side of the Atlantic, I rarely see Harry Kane featured in any kind of advertisement at all. That's true. Uh, um, which is sort of strange. Um, it's like when you see you know Morgan Freeman selling uh, cakes in Japan or something like that. You're like, I didn't know he was a big cake mascot in Japan. Anyway. Uh, Harry Kane wears limited edition Skechers boots in England match uh, is the uh, thing here from Will Stern. So after launching the, uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but basically after launching the uh, SKX01 soccer cleat, football boot, uh, in the United States in partnership with Harry Kane in July, Skechers, Skechers, Skechers dropped a limited edition colorway in honor of the striker winning the European Golden Shoe, uh, an award given to the top goal scorer in his division. Um, hmm. Yeah, a bit confusing there. That's conf- that's not that's confusing. But anyway, so there were these golden uh, uh, thirty six gold boots. Now, I don't know if that's thirty six pairs or just thirty six. Is it eighteen pairs? I, you never really know because if they're not supposed to be worn, no. Look, each of the pairs is numbered, so there's thirty six pairs. There's thirty six pairs. Okay. Um. Anyway, they retail for two hundred and thirty six pounds sterling or three hundred and seven US dollars, and he wore right. them against Finland at Wembley, which was so also one of, with a golden cap on his 100th appearance. So is, that, is that one of his... Is there only 35 available? I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, but I did wonder if you can buy a limited edition pair of Harry Kane boots for uh, £236, what kind of Harry Kane cards could you get for that price? Um, I want to play a little game called Should I Buy the Boots or Should I Buy the Cards? Not me, but if you were a Harry Kane fan, which would you prefer? Well, can I ask, have them boots gone on sale already? And if so, is there a resale market for them boots? I don't know about that. Oh, I found a re... Yeah. A thousand dollars in Germany. They look... Holy they, they smokes. Look pretty good. That's a listing, by the way. Not sold, by the way. That's not a sold... That's not a sold... Uh... Uh, golden boots, US 9, UK 9.5. They would just about fit me, Jason. How you can... Go- oh, can that was the size. A- I thought that was the grade. That's how... That's how uh, programmed for they cards look I am. I thought you were telling me it. To, to be honest, these are good collectibles. <laughs> Can I buy them, Jason? Uh, well, I don't know. You're a big Harry Kane fan. Not really. Not really. Um, so, for $300, let me see if I can find you a card for $300 of Harry Kane. That's I'm struggling. Harry Kane. What what upsets me is, like, is there not a number? Like, or it has the England flag on it so not for me not for me yeah um but are they gonna is it numbered anywhere like are they telling you this is version 35 of you know oh here we go attention the chrome finish will wear off with use <laughs> they look good i'm gonna show you them to you jason i feel like you're not able to fully appreciate without I've seen a, i'm looking at a picture of them on harry kane's shoot feet but have you seen the soles look at this I haven't seen the soles. Let's have a look at the soles of these boots. Okay, yeah. That's what we're talking about now. Like that's right. with the golden box. Okay. That's a bit gaudy for me. Do you think it's so? Hard to make gold, it's hard to make gold cardboard. The box, I mean. It's hard okay. to make gold cardboard look good. It does. Yeah, you need to make it a bit steel or something. Maybe make gold like for a matte finish on the on the box and then when you open the box and the gold are really popping the boots, will be mine. But like, I think that's nice. That's a nice. That's a nice boot design. Definitely. Okay, that's that's me. Sorry, uh, they are, Jason. Good find. Good find, Jason. Let me tell you. Um, but if you wanted to buy, uh, this, um, Harry Kane, uh, on card, auto from Panini Noir, would you like to guess whether this costs more or less than the boots? Less. 
less, about half of what the boots cost. I'd prefer the boots. And I'm, and I'm a card guy. You'd prefer the boots. Well, okay. If I was an English fan or a Harry Kane fan, I would I would be desperate. Imagine imagine hitting hitting the turf with those boots on in your in your school days, Jason, going, look look at this. There's only yeah, forty six of these and I'm just gonna run them up with them. Look at me. Yeah. I like I stuff understand. like that though. I like limited edition, especially if it's that limited. Although I don't really understand. Like when they're saying the golden boot, did he win like Europe's top score? I assume he didn't. He got um, forty six goals in this maybe he did. Like 46 goals in the season for Munich, was it? Is that all it I takes to get the golden boot these days? Well, 36. I'm oh, sorry, 36. My apologies. I thought he was maybe the Bundesliga's top, top scorer. scorer. And that's what they were trying to... But no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait. He won the European golden shoe. Okay. But I can imagine that if Skechers or if anyone really, uh, whether it's Nike or whoever, like if your athlete wins the European gold shoe, create a limited edition gold pair of shoes to commemorate that with as many pairs made as there is gold score. I think that's cool. I think yeah. that's cool. I'll give it's you a good branding exercise. Because in fairness, I didn't know Skechers made football cleats. That's no, what I'm do. saying. We don't know, but in in America, Harry Kane is on every the Harry Kane now poster on every mean. corner. When you said he was on a poster with Skechers, I thought normal Skechers, not football boots. No, I think he does advertise the runners as well, but he's there as a, as a footballer. He's an athlete. Yeah, he's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, if you were well, to buy, what do you say? With thousand, thousand quid is the asking price. All I can find oh. is one for it's nine hundred ninety nine euro. Yeah, right. From hype um, sales. Congratulations okay. to hype sales for being such a hype seller that he was in the know and got the. Yeah, I respect that. There's a dynasty patch, uh, number to five, uh, for for Tottenham Hotspur for eight hundred and thirty one dollars. Ah, but it was a training kit. It was a training kit. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a, a position on these boots, but I'd be interested to to see what people think, if they have an opinion. Any Harry Kane collectors out there? Would you I like to own one... a pair of Andrea Pirlo's boots? I think so, yeah. Like it, like boots that he's actually worn. Um, No, or let's like say just edition. limited edition boots. Yeah, yeah, I definitely would, yeah. yeah. Think of Tony Kroos, Jason. Would you not love a Tony... Well, not you, I suppose. No, I wouldn't. Um... <laughs> Someone has one up for seven hundred pounds. Sorry, look, there's like a little book that shows you every goal he scored. I think you flick through it, and it tells you these are what he scored. This is brilliant. So this like, imagine, is a little. Imagine, but this is stupid, right? Imagine if down down the years they had done this for Messi, Ronaldo the whole way through, and it's like, oh, this is when Messi scored ninety one goals. Yes, like Nike and the likes dropped the ball. In a big we way. could have been sitting here on a on a collectible football Shoot, boot pod. podcast that's right my god Skechers sells out a limit yeah I think it's brilliant I think they've done a great job congratulations to Skechers congratulations because like the golden boot is a literal gold boot yeah you know the trophy itself so I like I it I understand um, it was a good marketing play by Skechers because they've just been mentioned on the biggest collectibles podcast in the world wow big big one for them I also think like there is definitely a um this is a good sign for us in the car market. It's tangential and I'm not, you know, I don't want to start any conspiracy theories like everything collectible somehow crosses over into the car market, whatever. Mm. But I do think there's definitely a collectibles twist being put on things that there wasn't um, pre-COVID. Fair. I, I soccer think is happening. Like Everyone, I think the misunderstanding and the mis- misconception with soccer is that it was going to happen like that. And mm. there still is this misconception that in 2026, everything's going to go boom which is yeah. what we all dream and we all hope of. But the reality is collectibles have gone boom. Collectibles continue to be booming. Mm. And soccer will make sense eventually. And that might be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But eventually, we're all, all of us, everyone listening to this here podcast will be telling their yeah. little children or grandchildren back in the day going, people used to not take soccer serious. People <laughs> used to laugh. They used to laugh at soccer. Now look at you. Yeah. That's always good when your granddad starts saying, you know, they used to laugh at me. Yeah. You don't, you don't really want to, I suppose, I don't think you'd want to admit that to your grandchildren. I used to be a, a laughing stock. When they're not oh, I was laughing on the, now, you'd be kind of a bitter old man. No, but when you pull out, when you, when you go, they used to laugh at me and look at this, and you're pulling out some golden boots that Harry Kane wore back in his uh, second season, yeah. first season. I think they'd be like, like all right, brother, take this medicine and go back to bed. Yeah, take the blue one this time. That's enough for one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's talking about Harry Kane's boots again. Jason, our grandchildren should we be so lucky. Hers. Should we be so lucky? Our grandchildren will... We have documented our madness. Yeah. Oh my on this God. very I mean, podcast. If, this this will all have to be scrubbed. Yeah, we're going to have to delete it from the internet. Yeah. 
I think we have, there's some sort of right we have under European law to request the whole digital record of us be deleted. And I think I'm going to assert that right. Keep just like one episode up. That's just uh, yeah. all the predictions. Exactly. Maybe we can like do a super cut of all the correct predictions, put them into like one episode. Go, Jesus, our granddads were bleeding genius. Yeah, they knew. They knew. They knew. They didn't have to record thousands of errors just to get two or three correct predictions over the course of 10 years. Oh my God. Um, let's look at some auctions that are upcoming. And um, we're not going to go mad because these are just weekly auctions. There's nothing crazy really to look at. Um, but on Golden, uh, they have one ending uh, in just a few hours. Okay. Um, with the likes of Aluminium Al, Ultimate Stage, uh, Autograph. There's a base, just a base Chrome Ultimate Stage. 2,350 at the moment. Healthy, still healthy, the old Aluminium Al. Um, a 910, a uh, Mint 9 Auto 10, uh, La Liga Select, uh, Purple, Rookie. I mean, okay. doing well as That's well. That's a 25? Uh, I think it could be. It's to 20. Oh, to 20. 12 of 20. Okay. Um, and actually, I, I think I've probably said this about a million times, but as we know, purple looks good on Barcelona cards because of the colors of the Barcelona kit forming to make purple. Um, so you may wonder why do purple Barcelona cards look like that, but it's because it is excellent color analysis that I've just provided with you. Thanks, Jason. Um, I think this you'd is be a, nice a, good, one. a good painter. You mean a house painter? Well, it doesn't have to be a house. You could be painting anywhere, Jason. Wow. I could do like fences and everything. Yeah. Um, now, this is an interesting one. Neymar and Vinny Jr. on a National Treasures 107 uh, dual autograph. People are talking about the current uh, prospects for Vinny, Vinny Jr. to win the Ballon d'Or. Mm. And are you, are you familiar with this kind of trend that's going on, on Twitter this week? The Barclaysman trend? Yeah. There's kind of a, a large scale conversation going on about what it means to be a meaningful footballer, to kind of be an exciting footballer and all that kind of stuff. And I've heard Neymar and Vinny used in various conversations to say, even if Vinny was to win the Ballon d'Or, it, it still would not approach the legacy or impact or kind of importance in the history of football of a Neymar. Yeah. Um, and I think that's true. I think it's true. Obviously, Vinny has many, many years left in him. Yeah. But... And like, I don't want to ever become the guys that go, nah, you youths don't understand what we, mm. we used to watch. But uh, yeah. Neymar was different. Neymar was different. Let me tell you. Well, uh, I heard an interesting thing about this, which in a separate, an entirely football unrelated conversation about how um, people born after a certain year, after the advent of digital photography or digital like camera phones or whatever, um, don't have a big reaction to seeing baby pictures or childhood pictures of themselves because the photos look essentially the same. So if you imagine for the entire history of photography from like, I don't know, about like 1890 up until 2000, yeah. if you were, if you were 20, then a baby photo of you looked significantly different to what photos looked like that you were taking when you were 20. So when you saw a baby photo, it was like, it, it was black and white or it was like lower quality or it was whatever. So you went like, Oh, that's obviously from the past. Whereas if you were born in 2015 and you were, you know, someone took a photo of you as a baby with a, with an iPhone seven or whatever. And then, you know, you're on, by the time you get to the iPhone 15 or whatever, you look at a baby photo, you're like, yeah, that's just a photo. Like that's just a high quality image of a baby. Yeah. That's There's how no, it used to be. No where, nostalgia think, built in. It's no nostalgia. And I, and I think the same thing is happening if you look at clips of Wigan or Bolton from the uh, from the early 2000s Premier League or Portsmouth, you look at Yakubu scoring goal out there over Portsmouth, there's a graininess to the footage. There's a there's a kind of a, a lack of quality there, which you ascribe to a glorious past. Whereas if you watch Brian and Wemo from two years ago, or Ivan Tony score a great goal for Brentford, it looks the same as if you watch him do it now. So it's, it's like a... Yeah, so it's, it not as magical. Mm. it's not as magical. I've seen theory. a video and this is adjacent to probably not the same but it's probably just a point i'm making that you're gonna go i'm gonna cut that out but um there was a, there was a video there was a video on twitter and yeah. it was a the release of the playstation 2 when it first came out i don't know if you've seen this i didn't see this no and uh it's like a, a news report and a guy is like the like, playstation 2 came out like you just got it then he's like oh my god like the graphics are so realistic like it's crazy mm. and then they show the graphics and they're like blocky and they're, like they're terrible but he's like sure. they're going this looks real because all they had was playstation 1 and that was even worse again so yeah. even though this is like absolute cartoony craziness, they're going, this looks real. Like, this is mental. Yeah. And people are looking at it now going, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, that makes that makes perfect sense because it's like, it's so, 
I don't know. I think we're driving at the same point here. I can't quite figure out what the what the thing is, but there's something technology, eh? There's something about technology which I think flattens the experience of the world in a way that doesn't uh, lend itself to nostalgia or good feelings. And I'm sure there's a way to tie in vintage cards to that, but we're not the guys to do it. Yes. Um, anyway, that's why you look at a, a Neymar, a Vinny, Jewel Auto, and you go, Neymar was deadly, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, let's God. have a look at this. Oh, actually, there's something I want to talk about here. There are a few, this is uh, one that's ending in seven days, a few Julian Alvarez. Everyone's getting out with Julian Alvarez. Great vote of confidence there at Atletico Madrid. Um, that red one, we had one of them once and we sold it. This Inception? Yeah, we did. Hmm. Um, but, there. look at this, there are two stained glass from Panini Select. There was a twist in the in the tale of the stained glass renaissance uh, situation recently um, where, oh my God, am I going to be able to find this? I might have to do some editing of the podcast afterwards to close the gap it's going to take me to find this um but oh people trying to do collabs with us no 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 i got another email about a collab we don't collab (laughs) um he seems like a nice man but not for me okay well anyway rent the renaissance design appears to be used in an upcoming a penny or an upcoming tops product but non-soccer non-merlin chrome Mm-hmm. And I saw some people saying on social media, oh my God, Tops have just ripped off stained glass here. As if you, Renaissance didn't exist? Yes, yes. That's exactly what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So the, <laughs> Tops have been making a stained glass insert in, in uh, Merlin Chrome for years. Yeah, they've robbed it. They robbed it years ago. Yes, nobody cares. Uh, but then is they it, put it in. Is it motif? I think it must be motif, yeah. The biggest issue with Motif is it looks exactly like Echelenza, which is a Formula One set. Just to... <laughs> just, to just to further complicate matters. Yeah, like I looked at the football Motif and it just it was very Echelenza-y. Yeah. Which is perfect. You can... you can, you can. can. Uh, well, I haven't seen a stained glass out of that, so maybe it's not I don't. Motif. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I've people messaging me about football Motif. A very limited amount of the pre-sale got them. They did that as a... If anybody can find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I've actually had a few people from, not from Europe, message okay. us in the last day or two saying they're going to try and make this Dublin show. Like people are... Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> the transatlantics are just into it. They love it. Right. There are people yeah. coming from all over the world. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you off. Tell off me air, off air. I'll, I'll give you the exact names, but uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty nice. Pretty right. nice stuff, Jason, and I'm excited for it. We have a lot. That's actually something I wanted to ask. I know it's a, it's a slow podcast, but if anyone has any, like, guess what I was thinking? I was like, obviously, we're in, the, we're in the midst of preparing Double Card Show, but it's like, we're thinking of, like, activations. We're thinking of what will increase the the collector experience, you know, in the, the fanatics yeah. terms. But it's like, if anyone has any recommendations of, like, I've been to a card show or I've been to an event that wasn't a card show and this happened and it was good, big thumbs up to this. Like, when I go to an event, I want X, Y, Z, to mm. be there kind of thing uh, shoot it our way because it could be remember i gave you that idea the other day jason i don't want to ruin it on the pod yes with the, my little yeah my little activation thing Um, i think yeah if anyone has any form of anything that they think we could just take and you know do a bit of a renaissance the stained glass the way you don't know, just squeeze it into our show uh-huh uh, shoot it our way because who knows we might um it might be inspiring here's here's an idea tell me and maybe we've seen this at a maybe we saw this at one of the nationals but you know those things where you go in like the phone box type thing and all the money sprays around? Yep. What if we did that? But well, it's packs of cards. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you now, no one has done that, Jason. Um, in a world where and we could put it right beside like a grading booth so they can yeah, just yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it and win as the cards. Yeah, they can go. That's, off a, that's glasses. a two. Yeah. What happened that, to the, the edges? The corner are gone. Yeah. I think we can definitely get one of those with those cash to fake cash kind of thing. Mm. I would um, love to do that. Dublin card show books. Yeah, some Dublin card yeah. some yeah, Dublin card show books or soccer yeah, books. Yeah. Um we could definitely do that. I know someone that will do that for us, but I don't think they'll respond. You know someone has one of those machines? You do too, but like not um I don't know. The I don't person, know that I it's not part of their personality to a point where I know No, like you've had points with these people, Jason, but you wouldn't know what they do in their spare time. So you I could sit with this person <laughs> for many hours over a number of drinks and it would never even come up 
that they own one of those crazy cash phone box things. I, I pan the camera to the left and I have a big cash phone box thing right here. <laughs> oh my um, God. No, but like that can be done. Whether or not we, like I've never, I've never actually engaged in one of them. So I don't know like if that, is it a health risk? Is it like terrifying? Is it like, is it a nightmare? We don't know mm. that. It looks yeah. like a bit of fun. It looks a bit weird. People are always like, I can get all the cash. And, you know, there's a lot of ego going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, people the think kids, that's, the that's the whole genius it. of it. People think they can grab it. And if, you, if you're giving me that versus other kind of things, I'm like, give me that. Because everyone goes, I can do that. That's easy. Everyone that can't do that is just stupid. I'm brilliant. Yep. And then but the I game, like they found it. At the National Card Collector 2, Brian had a, like a, he, he had a whole thing at his booth, where, which was a claw machine. Mm. But it was like his branded. It was brilliant. And it's like, yeah. Who does that and how much does that cost? And can we do that? Do we want to do that? Why would we? Why would we not? Well, visually, you know? visually looking at someone playing a claw machine versus it's looking perfect. at someone in a in a cash filled phone booth. I'm saying you could do both. Oh my god. I'm oh saying it's more than this one is, thing, is, thing to do with the card show. Yeah, I'm saying a small call for any other similar, maybe yeah. better if possible. I don't uh, know if ideas. It's, uh, I don't we're know definitely because people do people tend to DM us when when they, the people listen to this, they listen to this podcast, Jason, and they do engage. So mm. You never know. Someone could say something that really makes us go, oh, Jane, I didn't think of that. And we could actually do it. And here's how we could do it, you know? Right. So um, you let's just quickly look at Fanatics Collect. I just want to show you a couple of listings uh, here. Uh, good to see a Woso listing, which is a 2020 Park side. Uh, Jason, breaking USL. news. Yeah. Can I hit you with breaking news? Can I just say that the Sophia Smith has $1,000 on it with uh, three days left? Yeah, please let's focus on that first. I'll, I'll get to my breaking news. I'm just saying that that's really good. It's also great to see a kind of a... a Secondary brand doing well. Go ahead. What's your breaking news? Are you ready? Oh, oh my God. Just announced. I'm not going to say yeah. who it's from because the person who was from has robbed content of other people, so I feel fine. Just announced. Any guesses for anyone in the audience? Just announced. Disney, Pixar, and Marvel cards will be coming to tops globally in 2025. In Q1, the first release will be Top's Finest X-Men 97 marking the first time Tops has distributed Marvel trading cards on a global scale. Holy smoke. Which I think means... Oh, yeah, there. Oh, I didn't see that one. Which I think means Upper Deck are out of town. Upper Deck are done. Now, here's a question. What does that do to Marvel? Marvel Chrome, which is European, UK exclusive. Does that almost elevate it as one of the first... If it's a first Tops Chrome... You know I don't what I mean? Know. And then I don't Pixar, know what's happened. Pixar is the big one there because obviously we've had Star Wars, we have Disney, we had Marvel. You know, in obviously Disney and the Marvel capacity was somewhat limited. It was Marvel Comics. Yeah. Um, Pixar. Off the top of my head, I'm not like Pixar is not. I know I know Pixar very well, but it's not throwing me a million ideas. But well, we had Pixar characters in um in Disney, Disney Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, because they're all kind of together. That's why Star Wars is there because Star Wars is owned by Disney now, right? Yeah. Disney owns everything. There are two companies, Fanatics and Disney, and between them, they own every IP available. Oh, my God. But it's like, can you... I suppose you could create a set with all all together. Like, what's the, would the Star Wars brand be elevated by being mixed in with everything else? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, could you do a Top's Finest where it's like there's or mini boxes and there's, you know, Marvel, Pixar, Disney... Perhaps Star a Top's Composite. Perhaps a Top's Composite, a, a licensed <laughs> Top's Composite. What an adventure that would be. Yeah. But uh, So globally, so that means it's no longer European exclusive. So for all those people who, who are asking about uh, Marvel and wonder, it's saying, why is this a European thing or all that kind of stuff? It seems like Tops have got the, the Disney go ahead worldwide. Yeah. So they, they finagle their way. And what does this do to, to Kakao? Does this, is this trouble for have the globally? Yeah. Does that mean Kakao are out of town? What about the, seen, the, the, the Weiss Schwartz company in Japan? Yeah, I've seen Kakao doing some Warner Brothers stuff. Which I, I saw assume that too, yeah. is its own thing. It's not under any of those. I don't think Disney owns Warner Brothers. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, well, there you go. That's some breaking, breaking news on what was a slow, slow oh day God. of news. We managed to sneak in. That That is a big deal. Um, it is a big 2025. Deal. It's currently still 2024. Is it? Like, so, yeah. So, basically, unless something else comes out, we're talking Disney Chrome, Disney Marvel are going to be kind of standalones, but the beginning of what's going to be a Tops and Disney, you know, Extravaganza. Extravaganza, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's fanatics, definitely fanatics cannot be stopped. No wonder they're not doing uh, Pittsburgh. They're like, hold on, we're just going to get the Disney yeah. IP. You just have to get the Disney. Although it makes sense now that they're going ahead with that show in Orlando. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're probably like, let's put, more, then... let's put more time, energy, and effort into Orlando. Yeah. 
Someone says, now drop Pops Marvel for you, Ed. <laughs> My friends, Marvel's already out. <laughs> Come on. Um, Wait, so, so you yeah. mean US too? And Pops say yes. That's exactly what global means. Right. Bye bye, German right. reshipper. Amazing, they say. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible news for German reshippers. Oh, sorry, boys. Uh, Most of the collectibles think of the German reshippers are excited about that news. They've obviously gone to sidelines of, of Tops. Someone has. Yes. Oh, wow. What the fuck? What's happening? Do you know that you know the Mickey Mouse Super Factor from Disney Chrome. I know the Mickey Mouse Super Factor from Disney Chrome. People were always telling me that had never been hit, but I see an image here. I'm actually going to have to oh. share my screen. People oh, always no. told me it wasn't hit. Um, obviously, now that I see it in a PSA slab, I would say anyone that paid attention to PSA's website would have seen it was hit. But look at this. This is something to do with a Disney card that you just cannot do. They've gone and got Mickey Mouse himself to hold it. That's wow. like the time they got Lewis Hamilton to hold his card. <laughs> Very similar. Yes. This is exactly the same as Lewis Hamilton holding his car. Whoa. Pretty so cool there, stuff. There we have it. There's going to be more Mickey Mouse Super Factors to come. Would you like to know, would you like to hear some comments from the Instagram post? I can imagine it's as happy. Uh, I mean, can I say this? All of Twitter seems very happy. Someone said, um, does this impact Disney Lorcana? That's a trading card game. It's a different license, my friend. Somebody said, lol, Lorcana fumbled the bag. Someone said, please don't ruin Marvel. Somebody said, more overpriced trash Tinkerbell was it coming. <laughs> Somebody said, boo, leave Marvel with Upper Deck. Uh, I'm looking forward to get Disney Garbage Pail Kids. So there's various reactions. Yeah, a moment but, of silence uh, for any Upper Deck Diamond dealers out there. Because that was obviously yeah. one of the big Upper Good Deck Lord. things. And obviously PMGs. Like, like, yeah, I don't know. But we don't yeah. know anything about that life, so we can't really. I don't know anything about the PMG life. Uh, I hope to one day. Or the Upper Deck Diamond dealer life at this moment of time. We no. don't know anything about that. Um, um, I don't know, but yeah. I, I, did, I did enjoy, I won't lie, I did enjoy having those European exclusive sets. Certainly, it's nice to be noticed, isn't it? Yeah, because I won. Like you wonder, like, like you look at Disney on one hundred, and you look at Marvel. It's like their secondary prices are really strong. But I always kind of attributed some of that to being European exclusive, harder to get, and therefore, regardless of the print run, if it's harder to get your hands on, the price will go up because That's people right. are scrounging around looking for German reshippers and the likes, and yes. that drives up demand. So, because let me tell you, that... most of, most uh, boxes in Europe cannot be shipped freely around the world. Uh, quickly, easily, and competently. That's right. So um, even the supply is is even lower because even though there are boxes, they can't necessarily be gotten out. Of there. Yeah, gotten out of here. And it's like a lot, a lot of people, like people saying goodbye to that German reshipper. It's like that's a very competent person that was able to put something like that together. Yeah. A lot of people go, "I need a German reship." Never mind. I don't care. Yeah, I'm not getting involved. Uh, so, um, are you are you are you are you positing that this is the beginning of the end for the? No. The Disney Marvel try Star no. Wars. I just no. think like there's something to be there's a there's a teachable moment there to understand that the success of Disney and Marvel Chrome wasn't necessarily uh how the product was put together. It was also partially how it was limited globally and kind of yeah. the demand became global. But we'll see what happens. It's 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 interesting. Like in the fairness, this kinda of, I'm on kind of the thing that makes me happy about this is that when we were at the national, there were so many whispers of Upper Deck losing the license da, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And we are just confused being like, are people, is that actual conversations happening or are people confused at the fact that there's a European license and that's how Tops are able to put out Tops Chrome? Yes. Um, and now it looks like it was a bit of both was going on that Upper Deck were also losing their licenses, but this is almost the equivalent of them putting out unlicensed products for NBA and NFL. Mm. Although instead of being unlicensed, it was European exclusive. They're like, right, we can't do it until 2025. Cool. We're still going to do it out of our European kind of setup. Yes. Or whatever way the licenses work. But yeah, it's interesting to see how Upper Deck and Kakaweo are going to be affected. Obviously, you'd imagine Upper Deck are out. Globally, does that include Kakaweo? Probably does. They probably, Fanatics probably said, we've managed to find an angle here by taking a European license. So we're not going to let anyone else have an angle. Let's take the global license. That's probably mm. what happened, which is smart. I, someone told me what Upper Deck are going to do, but I can't remember who told me, so I can't say it on the podcast. <laughs> Can you tell me after? I'll tell you after, but I can't say. Someone said it to me, and I just can't remember who it was and what they told me and how commercially sensitive the information is. So I can't. Um, okay. But, you know. Anyway, look, that's our podcast. Okay.